Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, this is um, the beginning of a couple of lectures dedicated to problems um, in theory of probabilities. Well, problems is my favorite uh, part of this course. I think the whole purpose of the, of the course is actually to present you with certain problems, some of them easy, some of them challenging. Um, so the course is presented as part of the advanced uh, math course for teenagers. It's presented on unisor.com and that's where I suggest you to listen to this lecture because it has notes, some hints maybe, and uh, as far as the problems are related, I'm always encouraging you to try to solve these problems yourself. Um, they are explained basically on this website, exactly in parallel to this lecture. But don't read the solution, don't, don't listen to me before you start doing something yourself. So try to solve it yourself and then, we'll, and then you can listen to whatever I'm suggesting. Maybe it's a different way to solve the same problems or whatever. Okay, so today um, I have four different easy problems um, in the theory of probabilities. And let me just start from, from the first one. Okay, you have a standard deck of 52 cards. Now this deck contains four different suits, uh, spades, hearts, uh, diamonds and uh, clubs. Each one has 13 different ranks of the cards. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, Jack, Queen, King and Ace. All right, so you have this standard deck. Now, you randomly pick two cards from this deck. And um, the problem is, what's the probability of picking two spades? Probability of two spades. OK. Um, I suggest two different ways to solve this problem. The way number, um, uh, number one is the following. Well, to pick up two spades, you have to pick the first spade and the second spade as two completely independent random choices. Now, if you have 13 different spades in the deck of 52, the probability to pick the first spade is equal to obviously 13 50 seconds because all the cards have the same probability to pick, which is 1 50 seconds, and 13 of them which are all spades, are actually good for you. So that's the probability to pick the card um, of uh, the suit uh, spades for the first your pick. Now you have the second experiment, which is completely independent of the first one. But the second experiment has slightly different numerical conditions. It doesn't have 52 cards anymore, it has only 51. And from this randomly um, uh, fr fr from these 51 cards, you have to randomly pick one which is supposed to be a spade. Now, you have already picked one spade, so there are only 12 left, which means that the probability to pick the spade on the second try is 12 50 seconds. And now, since these are independent events, and the probability of the first one is this and the second one is that, the probability of both of them happening together is a product of probabilities, as we know, for independent events. The probability of end events is the product of probabilities, as long as they are independent. Okay, so that's the answer. Well, you can obviously reduce it slightly. Uh, this is one fourth, and uh, this is three one, so it's one seventeenth. So that's the answer. Now, on the other hand, you can approach this problem slightly differently. Let's have the situation not as two sequential picks, but as one pick of two cards. Now, how many different pairs of two cards you can pick out of 52 cards deck? Well, obviously, it's this one.
which is equal to 52, 51, 1, 2, which is 26 times 51, right? Now, that's the total number of pairs. Now, which are good for you? Well, the, goods, the good pairs are those which are chosen from 13 spades. And how many different combinations of two uh, cards out of 13 we can pick? So these are our good combinations. So, this is number of good pairs, this is number of all pairs, and therefore the probability of two spades equals to this divided by that, which is 2, 3, 1, 17, exactly the same answer to be expected. So that's two different ways to approach the prob pr problem. Either you pick one and then another, or you pick a pair. Doesn't really matter, the result is exactly the same. Okay, second problem. Second problem. You have exactly the same 52 cards deck. And you are looking for a probability to pick a card which has a rank greater than 5. Which is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, Jack, uh, Queen, King and Ace. Right? So this is a probability of from 6 to Ace. So what's the probability to pick one card which has this rank. Well, that's where we actually can use the theorem of addition uh, of probabilities, because the probability, as we know, is an additive measure. So if you have certain events which are completely non-intersecting, the probability of either or of those is equal to some of them, their probability. It's like a, like a measure, like area of, like area of this thing. If you have non-intersecting pieces, the area of the whole thing is equal to sum of these areas, right? All right. So, what are non-intersecting events which we are talking about? Well, these are events of picking exactly 6, picking exactly 7, picking exactly etc., up to king and ace. Now, what's the probability of each one of them. Well, we know that there are four different six out of the deck of 52 cards, right? We have a six of spades, six of hearts, six of diamonds, and six of clubs. So there are four different sixes out of 52. So the probability is one thirteenth. And the same is the probability of 7, etc., up to ace. And the sum of these probabilities is, let's count how many of them, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, jack, queen, king, and ace, 9. So the sum is 9 thirteenths, and this is the probability of picking a card which has a rank greater than 5. All we have to do is add 1 thirteenth, which is the probability of each rank, 9 times. Alternatively, instead of this, you can choose to calculate different probability. What's the probability of opposite event? Card less than or equal to 5 which is probability of 2, 3, 4, and 5. There are just smaller number of these events. And the, the, the probability of each of them is still exactly the same, which is 1 thirteenth. 
So the probability of the whole thing is equal to 4 thirteenths. Now the probability of this event, which is opposite, would be 1 minus 4 thirteenths, which is 9 thirteenths, exactly as we had before. So I basically divided the entire sample space into two different categories rank greater than 5 or rank is less than or equal to 5 and whatever is easier to calculate this is slightly easier because the number of these is 4 whereas number of those is 9 so it doesn't really matter not much of a difference okay that's the second problem now the third problem is Okay, um, let's say you are in the casino and casinos offer you a new game. They give you four dice and they're saying if you roll and one of them, uh, or at least one of them, uh, will show six, then you win. Four dice. Is it a good game for you or not? So how can we basically decide this particular um, question? We have to evaluate the probability of having at least one six out of four dice. And then we can just think about if this probability is greater than half, then, um, then it's, it's fine. You can play this game as one-to-one, -one, which means you are betting one unit of currency and and they're paying you one unit if you win, or you're losing this one unit if you lose. Um, so that's basically how you should approach this problem. Now, if probability is different, I mean, it's greater than half or less than half, then, then you should decide, basically, maybe you should just change the, um, the payoffs or, or bets, etc., etc. But what's important is to evaluate the probability. So what's the probability? of having at least one six out of four dice. Well, in this particular case, it's easier to calculate what's the probability of not having six out of four dice, which means that the first die should really be either one or two or three or four or five, and the probability of this is five, six, right? The probability of the second dice to be non-equal to six is also five, six. So is the, uh, the third, and so is the fourth. They're all independent, so the probability is supposed to be multiplied together. So the probability of not having six on any of the four dice is this one. And the probability of having six on at least one of those, that's the opposite event, it's this one. 1 minus 5 over 6 to the power of 4 which is approximately 0 0.5177, which is greater than half. So the probability of having at least one six out of four dice is greater than one half, which means you can actually bet a Bitcoin and expect a payoff of the Bitcoin, and you'll be definitely happy if you will play a significant amount of time. Now, what if it's only three dice? Well, with the three dice, the power will be three here, right? So, um, the probability will be one minus five, six to the third degree. That's zero point four two one three. So this is not a good game for you. This is a good game for, for the house. If, again, the payoff is exactly the same as your bet, then you would lose more than you win. So that's basically the solution. Can it be done differently? Yes, we can. You can use certain combinatorics to find, instead of opposite event, to find a direct event. I just don't want to uh, stop on it, but if you want, you can just send it and send it to me and I'll put it on my website as your solution.
Okay, the last prog pro problem is slightly more difficult. I, I would still consider it to be an easy because it's just one direct formula and, and you get the solution. So here is a very long explanation of what it is and then very short solution. Um, there are three manufacturers which are making t-shirts. Now t-shirts are of two different uh, kinds, whites and non-whites. All right. So the manufacturer A makes 75% of white t-shirts. That's how its production is done. B makes 50% whites and C 25%. Now, then there is a department store which buys wholesale from these manufacturers to sell to the public. Now, here is how the department, so, uh, department store buys. It buys from manufacturer A 25%, manufacturer B 35%, and manufacturer C 40%. So, 25% of all shirts which are bought by department store are from this guy. And obviously 75% of them are white and the rest are non-white. Now, 35% of everything which, we, which department store buys are from the manufacturer B, out of which 50% are white and other 50% non-white. And then the same for C. Now, some of these, by the way, is equal to 100%. 25, 35, and 40, which means there are no other manufacturers. Now you come to a store and you pick completely randomly a t-shirt. So what's the probability of this t-shirt being white? Well, this is a typical problem um, on uh, total probability. Uh, now, the total probability formula is um, basically based on the concept of uh, conditional probability and uh, the the idea basically is is very simple so if you are buying uh, a, a t-shirt so what's the probability of buying a t-shirt well the probability of buying t-shirt is sum of probabilities of being white uh, and manufactured by the manufacturer A or it can be white manufactured by B or it can be white and manufactured by by C, right? So these are kind of conditions which somehow must be uh, taken into consideration. But, but we, we don't really, we, we cannot really add these probabilities, obviously, because each particular manufacturer is not represented in the same way. They are represented in certain percentages, right? So basically the formula here is, you have to um, have the probability of this particular short made by manufacturer A, and then you can multiply it by the, prob by the conditional probability, which gives you the probability of the shirt which is manufactured by A and white. That's what it is. Similarly, here, we have to multiply it by the probability of B, and then you will get the probability of the shirt being white, and being manufactured by B and being white. Same thing here. If you multiply it by the probability of picking the C, you will have the probability of C and white. So these are actually the probabilities which you really should add together to get the probability of picking the white T-shirt. Well, it's again very easily um, showing on, on, the, on, on this kind of a graphical representation. If these are t-shirts, now this is white, 
and this is white, and this is white. So this is um, the graphical representation of um, white t-shirts out of uh, the whole set of different t-shirts. And obviously the area is equal to uh, this area plus this area plus this area. So if this is A, this is B, and this is C, and this is white, so this is A and W, this is B and W, and this is C and W. And, the, and, and that's why we have this particular formula. And this particular formula actually, uh, since we don't know um, uh, a, a, any of these, but we do know these guys, and since and since since this equals to this this is the classical formula of conditional probability we can calculate each one of those corresponding with this and this so we know all this and therefore we can very easily calculate the probability as sum of them. So this is the formula of total probability. This is PW equals to sum of these, which is uh, the probability of picking uh, the, uh, the the, the t-shirt manufactured by A is obviously uh, 25%, right? So it's 0 0.25. Because 25% of all shirts which are bought by department store are from A. That's why the probability of picking the t-shirt from A is 25%, 0 0.25. And now we know that conditional probability of picking white, which is manufactured, if we already know it's manufactured by, by A, is 75%, so we have to multiply it by 0.75 plus this one. Since 50%, right? No, 35%. 35% of all shirts um, bought by department store are from B, so the probability of picking the uh, t-shirt manufactured by B is 0 0.35. Now, we know that if we know that the, uh, th it's manufactured by B, then the probability of having white is equal to, for B it's 50%, so it's multiplied by 50. And finally, the probability of picking a t-shirt manufactured by uh, C is 40%, right? And out of those, 25% are white. And that's the answer, which is equal to 0 0.4625. So that's the solution. And this is the formula of total probability. The P of W is equal to sum of these. Actually, again, we start with some of these, but each one of those equal to this as a formula of conditional probability. Okay, that's it. That was my last problem for today. I will probably uh, try to put a little bit more um, problems into this category of easy probability problems. And then I'll hope I will have some um, time to, to put something for advanced problem, problems, um, just a little bit more difficult. Um, I don't think we should really put a difficult, really difficult problems uh, into this course, because the theory of probability is actually uh, in its uh, uh, real 
uh, capacity is introduced only in the colleges. But anyway, for high school, it's uh, some kind of introductory. And these formulas, simple calculations, whatever, they are quite appropriate. So thanks very much and good luck.